I'm Steve James, and welcome back to this audio class on how to read the Bible for understanding and power. This is the More Abundant Life Podcast, episode number 375. We will continue with the comfort of God, part four where we will learn about Jesus Christ returning with his saints, where the saints who have endured the persecution and tribulation will have their day. We will read about the resurrection of the just and the unjust. The devil will be cast into the lake of fire. Then there will be no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying, no more pain. And we will be forever with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But there's another thing coming, thing in the order of events on Jesus Christ's second coming, and that is when Jesus Christ returns with his saints. And that can be found in Second Thessalonians chapter 1. And I'll show you some of this. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 1 through 4 says, And Paul and Savanus and Timothy unto the church of the Thessalonians, in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is me, because of your faith groweth exceedingly, and the charity or the love of God in the renewed mind and manifestation of every one of you all towards each other so that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecution and tribulation that ye endure he's saying because of all this that you do and that you endure we glory in you we're blessed with you in the persecution and tribulation that you endure keep your finger here and I just want to look at this for a minute okay we're gonna come right back to this I just want to show you and point out some of this what happens in that patience and faith okay uh, keeping your finger here go to 2nd Timothy chapter 3 2nd Timothy chapter 3 Second Timothy chapter three in verse ten it says But thou hast fully known my doctrine, my right way of belief, and my manner of life, purpose, the things that I purpose in life, my believing, my long suffering, my charity and my patience, persecution and afflictions which came unto me at Antioch, at Laconium at Lystra, what persecutions endure, but out of them all the Lord, what? Delivered. delivered me. He delivered him. Next verse says, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. I'm sorry, I wish it wasn't in there. But if you stand for God, there's going to be people that don't like it. And they're going to have power behind them that we looked at earlier. Look at the Gospel of John, chapter 15. The good thing about it is we know that we can handle it and stand with it. Because the Lord delivered him out of them all. John 15, 16. It says, Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Jesus Christ speaking says ordained you that you should should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever ye shall ask the father in my name he may give it you these things I command you that ye love one another if the world hate you ye know that it hated me before it hated you if ye were of the world, the world would love its own. But because ye are not of the world, 
But I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hated you. Remember the words that I said unto you, The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my sayings, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. Who sent Jesus Christ? God. So what's happening here is they don't like God. They don't like God. Look at verse 23. He that hateth me hateth my father what? Also. See, the reason they hated Jesus Christ is because they hated God. They didn't like God. In verse 24, if, if I have not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. Wow. But this cometh to pass that word, that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. Jesus Christ was the most loving man that ever lived and ever walked the face of the earth. All he ever did was love. He healed people. He raised people that were dead from the dead. He really took care of people. He hugged the unlovable. And they hated him without a cause. If you stand for God, they will hate you because you will speak for God. They hated him without a cause. And we don't even walk perfectly. So sometimes we'll have to stand up to a little persecution. Look at 1 John. Keep your finger here in Timothy. I mean, I already lost it, but Thessalonians. Thessalonians. Look at 1 John, way near the back of the book. In chapter 3, and in verse 1, it says, Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us. Pretty neat, huh? What manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called, what? The sons of God. You know what? We're sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us, what? No, don't even know us, because it knew him not. They didn't love Jesus Christ, they didn't know Him, and they're not going to know us. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when He shall appear, when we meet Him in the sky, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. Pretty neat, huh? Listen. As you stand for God and speak for God, some people won't like it. Some will. Some will hear your words and love them. And some won't. It doesn't matter. We just speak the word because we love God and His word. We lo and, and as we do that, we know that when Jesus Christ comes back, we're going to see Him as He is and be like Him. Just like Jesus Christ. And all that will hear us will have the same thing also. Let's go back to Second Thessalonians. Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians chapter one, verse five. He says, And you guys have put up with all this persecution and tribulation that you endure. Verse five, which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God, that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God, for which ye also suffer seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. Whoa. Something's happening here. Now, those people that are going to be troubling us, they are going to be recompensed of God. The ones that trouble you. And, verse 7, to you who are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels and with us. I'll show you that in the next couple of verses. With us, in flaming fire and taking an vengeance on them that know not God, that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power when he shall come to be glorified in his saints or with his saints and to be admired in all them that believe because our testimony among you was believed in that day. There's a time coming when Jesus Christ is going to come back with his saints. And when he comes back, you can read about it, it what happens here in Second, Second Thessalonians and in the book of Revelations. But there's a time coming where no one's going to laugh at Jesus Christ, and they're not going to laugh at us, and we're going to be with Jesus Christ as he makes things right here on earth. And all those that troubled us are going to be in a little bit of trouble themselves. And it's all written here in God's Word. Pretty, pretty neat. Go to chapter 2, right here, and in verse 16. Now our Lord Jesus Christ Himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us, and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace. Comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. You see, God's word says that we are not to, uh, we're not to get even with people. We're not to pay back punishment. He says, vengeance is mine, said the Lord, I will repay. So we just don't repay. There's a time coming when Jesus Christ comes back with his saints and with us, and then, then payback is going to happen. And we're going to be with him when this happens. What we're going to do exactly, I don't know. There's things written in the book of Revelation. There's things written in this book also. And you can see that... Jesus Christ is going to be Lord of Lord and King of Kings. And he's coming back to set things right. And I'll tell you something. It's not good for anybody to hurt any believer. It won't be a good thing that happened to them. If they persecuted us, hurt us in any way, they will have to answer to God for that. And that, it says here, comfort your hearts and establish you with every good work. We don't recompense evil for evil. We don't do any vengeance. We let God sort all that out. God's going to do it. But we're going to see it be done. Pretty neat, huh? I want to get into this, this here about the resurrection of the just and the unjust. And let's go to Acts chapter 24. In verse 15. And have hope towards God, which they themselves also allow, that there shall be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and the unjust. There's going to be a time later, after the gathering together, after the rewards are passed out to us, a period of time will go by. I don't know how long. There's, there's some indication of about a thousand years, but there's other things in there that I don't understand in the book of Revelation. But there'll be a period of time that will go by. Then we'll come back with the saints to straighten things out. And then everybody will get up, the just and the unjust. Look at John, the Gospel of John, chapter 5, 28. It says, Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which, in the which, all that are in the grave shall hear his voice, and shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. 
See here it is called the resurrection of life, the just, and the resurrection of damnation. Look at Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 35. It says, Women received their dead a lot, a raised to life again, and others were tormented, not accepting deliverance, that they may attain a better resurrection. Here it's talking about in the Old Testament, uh, some people believed for deliverance and got it right away, and others didn't quite believe for the deliverance, but they're still going to get the better resurrection. Now what do you think is the better resurrection? I think it's the resurrection of the just, or the resurrection of life. There is a resurrection of unjust and of damnation. That's the, the worser of the two. So when it says a better resurrection, it's talking about the resurrection of the just. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And we were there earlier. But I want to show it to you again. In verse 22 it says, For in Adam all died. Even so in Christ shall all be made alive. This is talking about all Old, Old Testament uh, believers and unbelievers. And unbelievers in our administration. And the believers and unbelievers in the administration after we have been gathered together. Because there's still going to be people here on earth after we're gone. All are going to get up. All of them. They shall all be made alive. And this is everybody except those that were gathered together in the air to ever be with the Lord. Us. We are saved from the wrath. We are not part of the resurrection of the just of the unjust because we are all will be will be already raised and hanging out with Jesus Christ pretty neat huh go to revelations near the end of the book I mean right near the end of the book in chapter 20 in verse 5 says but the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part of the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. And go to verse 13. Says, and uh, verses uh, 5 and 6 are uh, the first resurrection, the resurrection of the just. In 13 it says, And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and in it, and death, and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. If you're not in the resurrection of the just, at the end time you will be cast into the lake of fire. Let's go to chapter 20 right here. Verse 10. It says, And the devil that deceiveth them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophets are, and they and shall be tormented day and night forever. The adversary's final resting place is the lake of fire and brimstone. That's his final place. Revelations 21, 1 through 4. It says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. 
And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and the God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. In Revelation 22, 20 and 21 are the last two verses in the Bible. He which testifies these things said, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, Lord, even so, come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Surely come quickly. And closing, I'd like to read uh, in First Thessalonians chapter 1. First Thessalonians chapter 1. Now there's a lot here to take in, I understand. But this will give you a framework for reading afterwards. And as you follow along with these notes, and in verse 2 it says, We give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers, remembering without ceasing your work of believing, your labor of love, and patience in hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of God and our Father. Knowing, brethren, beloved, your election of God. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost, and in much insurance, as ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sakes. And ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction, with the joy of the Holy Ghost. They received the word of God in much affliction, and with the joy of the Holy Spirit, so that ye were in samples to all that believed in uh, Mechabedonia and Achaia. For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Mechabedonia, in Achaia, but also in every place your faith to God would is spread abroad, so that we need not to speak anything. For they themselves show of us what manner of manner of entering in we had unto you, how ye turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. Paul went in, he taught him God's word, and the people themselves they turn to God from their idols to serve the living and true God and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. We don't have to worry and be concerned about that period in the Revelation time because we're out of there. We're not in that. He saved us from that. Today, we really just have one real big thing to do, and that's to wait for His Son from Heaven. In this class on how to read the Bible for understanding and power, we have covered intensely the law of believing. Believing comes up over and over again in this class. We're even called believers. We just finished the section that deals with the hope. The hope of Jesus Christ's return and all the events that will happen in their order. What comfort there is in knowing how these things will happen in our future. We are going to have a wonderful future. In the next episodes, we're going to get into the love of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13, it says this, We now have believing 
We know about believing. We operate believing. We've just learned about the hope of the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And all that will happen in its own order and time. Next, we will learn about the love of God in the renewed mind and manifestation. It says we have these three. But it says the greatest of these is charity, which is the love of God in our minds in action. And that's what we're going to get into in the next two episodes.